Welcome to another Borderlands 2 series. This time we are doing vending machine only, which is kind of boring, but to give it some nice flavor, it's kind of a role play. I am role playing as a guy interning for Marcus, and as part of the internship, I'm only allowed to use stuff from Marcus's vending machines. That's part of the promotion. I gotta go around killing stuff while saying, this is a Marcus gun from his machine, come get it. But unfortunately, I'm gonna crash on a train here, so my first objective is to make it back to Marcus. Oh man, I barely survived that train crash. Good thing I'm with Claptrap now. Unfortunately, I am gonna have to use some non-vending machine guns just to get back to Marcus. I'm sure he'll understand though. He'll understand. They're, if I run into a vending machine along the way, then I'll use those. But for now, I gotta use the guns I have on me. I'm sorry, Marcus, but technically, the internship starts tomorrow, so I should be fine. Let's see, these are Marcus brand playing cards, actually, so I am entitled to this money. If you'll excuse me, I need to throw some shade at the Red Sox broadcast crew real quick. Because the first day of baseball, or Orioles baseball, the Red Sox murdered the Orioles like 13 to 2. And the Red Sox broadcaster said, I can't imagine how bad it must be to be an Orioles broadcaster. Can you imagine how terrible that job would be? He freaking said that. How unprofessional is that? And then, the next two games, the Orioles smoked them. The worst team in baseball beat them two times in a row. So suck it, Boston broadcast team. How's it feel? Oh, it must be really hard to be a broadcaster for the Red Sox because their team's so bad. Uh. All right, I got out of my system. So Marcus Intern. This character's name is Marcus Intern, by the way. First name Marcus, last name Intern. Not a well-developed identity. He is canonically an Orioles fan, which is pretty appropriate for a guy who's desperate enough to take an internship from Marcus. Play the clip right now in the highlights where the guy hit a home run and it hit the freaking cardboard cutout of the dog and went bonk. Conforto on the run and that ball is gone. It's one nothing here in the second. Thoughts on the Lego Ideas piano. Oh, there you go. Some Lego talk. Bye, baseball. Anyways, the Lego Ideas piano, very cool, very expensive. The marketing is a bit deceptive, though, because it says, like, playable piano. It will play songs with a phone app. But what it actually does is you, like, it, like, spins a gear with, like, a um, motor box. And it does the same sequence of keys every time. Like, it doesn't play individual keys for each song. It plays the same sequence of keys over and over again, like a freaking looping sprite animation. And then your phone speaker plays the song. So it'll, it'll, it can be any song on the speaker, but it'll be the same animation of keys. So it's a little deceptive because it does the, the marketing does not really mention that's how it actually works. But it is a very cool set. Ooh, is that a Marcus ammo machine? Nice. Also, Marcus did inform me that he has a contract with Dr. Zed. These are licensed out by Zed, but they still are technically Marcus vending machines, so I can buy shields from them. Two bullets in a mag. Two cannibal registered fat guys rib cage. One of these days, I'm gonna voice the entire game. I'm gonna release a like 10 hour video called Borderlands 2, but I do all the voices. A Marcus vending machine, wow. Well, time to get my internship started, I guess. Let's go with uh, Inflammatory Aegis and a Woeful TMP, why not? And for a shield, let's buy shield. That's, that's a classic shield. It's like buying a Coca-Cola when they say, what kind of Coke do you want? You say Coke. What kind of shield do you want? You want shield. Ah, Suicide Psychos. You'd have to be psycho not to shop in Marcus's store for all your grenade needs. Boom. For reminding me of the pre-sequel, you must die. Today's trashing of the pre-sequel is brought to you by Marcus Munitions. Level up. Oh, no wheel. It feels weird, man. I'm actually conditioned to want to spin a wheel now. I've said this before, but it's true. When I see the Borderlands 2 level up, I instinctively go, oh, time to tab out for the wheel. Oh, wait, no, I'm not doing that run this time, huh? Hey, pow, out of the way. I'm trying to play darts. You're on the middle. I can't hit the middle if you're just gonna freaking hang there. Oh my god. The nerve of some people. One thing you'll notice in a lot of modern games is that they do a thing where they like lead your eye down the critical path. Like right now, like if I'm coming up this ramp, right? I'm like, hmm, which way do I go? But over there is a light. So I just instinctively know that this is the way to go. A lot of games do this. It's uh, sometimes it can be subtle. Sometimes it's really blatantly obvious, but Gearbox is actually pretty good and doing it subtly. So, I mean, you notice. The whole point is you notice subconsciously, but like if, if you're playing like Uncharted, it's like really, really obvious. Like it's pretty bad in Uncharted, it really breaks my immersion. But in Borderlands, they're pretty subtle about it, you know? They don't really have giant flashing arrows telling you where to go. To be clear though, I would rather more games have giant flashing arrows because when they try to like disguise it, it's like, oh, wow. Should you go into the one door that has a light in it and is also painted yellow? Oh, I don't know. I hate that. It like patronizes me. Like freaking Last of Us 2. All the time, Last of Us 2. Like, you walk over to something, all the doors locked, and then when you turn the camera around, that's where you actually go. They use that trick, like, five times. I hate that so much. Like, if you're gonna make it really poorly disguised, just don't disguise it at all and put a freaking arrow. I don't got time for this crap. I use quest markers in Skyrim for a reason. 
Uh, hello? I'm here taking the, uh, national survey for Marcus customers. It says here you bought some guns for Marcus. I'd just like to know, um, are you satisfied with your purchase? And would you perhaps like to purchase some more? Oh, man, I gotta do a co-op run, actually. This is a perfect setup for a talk show. Like, look at that. There's the host. There's the guest. We need a third person as the cameraman, though. But look, I'm, I'm sitting right here, and I'm going, so, you're a terrible person, Joker. Then this guy over here goes, how about another Joker? Murray, bang. And then I'm over here filming. And I'm just like the narrator and I go, oh, and then he Joker shot Murray and then it's hilarious. That'd be so great. Wish I had two friends. See, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You top it off. The frosting on the Johnny Cupcake is the self-deprecation. Johnny Cupcake could use some freaking self-deprecation. Piece of crap, Johnny Cupcake. Was that a new runner skin? My Lord. That's amazing. Sorry, though. Can't use it. Marcus items only, baby. I got to preserve the magic. One of these days, I will have every skin. And then at that point, I will have nothing to do in Borderlands 2 besides beat the hammerlock dlc but i'm never gonna do that so gotta keep the dream alive gotta keep some content left in this game huh sounds like scooter has his own mexican food brand note to self kill scooter later we cannot have anyone compete with marcus's big bean burrito five years later scooter's hand got stuck in a clamp when he was on a rocket ship but little did scooter know who was the guy that loosened that clamp in the first place Yours truly. Excuse me, you Corporal Reese. I heard you calling for help. Well, I don't have a medical pack, but I do have a Marcus gun. Could help you out. There you go. Oh, he's dead. Actually, I want this back. Marcus did tell me to make sure to kill any barf skags I see, because that's the kind of skags we use for the meat in our Marcus's bean burritos. Hey, Davis. Why do you only have a shin guard on one of your legs there? What leg is that? Hang on to me. Oh, it's his right leg. I had I had to turn around and like look at my actual leg. Okay, hang on. Hey, Davis, why do you only have a guard on your right leg? <laughs> what are you, a left-handed batter? Best character in the Borderlands franchise they ever is. Jack doesn't stand a chance. They got me. If they got you, how'd you write that? Lori, are you there? When are you coming home? The boys miss you, Tom. Same note. Lori, are you there? Dang, Tom. Dude, give it up, Tom. She's not coming back. Tom's stuck in here late at night after the divorce. And he's like, oh, crap. I know she works here, but which desk is hers? I've got it. I'll put a note on both desks. That way she has to see it. They got. They got what? Wow, this looks nice. Oof, I'm kind of nervous. First day on the job. Okay. Time to go meet my boss. Remember, by the way, that I am playing as a Mohawk guy. That was on purpose. Hey there, boss. How you doing? It's me, your intern, reporting in for the first day on the job. Hmm, but didn't you use some non-Marcus guns at the beginning of the game? I'm going to have to punish you for that. Oh my god, my knee. That guy in the cutscene was me. You shot me. Oh boy. Youch, that hurts. Um, do you have, like, a health plan or something? Yes. Go talk to Dr. Z. Okay, I'll go see him. You really can't do a Marcus impression, by the way. Soon, come on in. I'll see you now. Whew, okay, thank god. Hi, Dr. Zed. Um, I just signed up with Marcus Health Insurance, so you're my doctor. Uh, nice waiting room, by the way. I really like the, um, the red. Hey there, son. I'll be happy to treat you. Just let me finish things up with this patient real quick. Uh, yeah, sure. Finish things up, but my leg hurts really, really bad. Is there, like, a, like a time frame? Oh, uh, yeah. Should be, like, uh, like five more hours. Five hours? Screw this. Yeah, that works. God is my witness. One day, I will find a Okay, I think that's my cue to leave. Thanks for healing my leg off camera. Oh, wait, no, he healed my leg. <laughs> Thanks for healing my leg off camera. Welp, now that that's out of the way, time to uh, check in for my first real day on the job. Oh, great. We have some homeless guy squatting near us. Awesome. How desperate do you gotta be to live in a dumpster and sanctuary? <laughs> I can tell you one thing. That guy's not getting his own series. If you're gonna be promoting Marcus, you gotta know how to use a fire weapon. Like this? <laughs> yeah, like that. That is perfect, Vault Hunter. Next, you gotta know how to do a much better Marcus impression, because this is really, really bad. Weapons may only be sold by Hyperion representatives. What? No, not true. The only place I buy my weapons is Marcus Munitions. I love corrosive weapons. Hey, me too. We're gonna get along great, Marcus. Whoa, did someone seriously tip Moxie $7,000? <laughs> man. What a loser. That guy will never get a series made out of him. Do you think canonically that this run is taking place at the same time as the Jessup RP? So like Jessup is a character in this playthrough. Like he's the guy by the dumpster. I like that idea. All right, I'm going to go with it. 
The Oboe Shoes Expanded Cannon. This run is part of the Jessup lore. Why do you hate Senza? Have you seen that guy's bathtub? Way too small, dude. It's not even like a circle. If you're going to have a bathtub, it's got to be like a circle bathtub. Room for at least me and 10 other people. Oh yeah, not a lot of action could happen in Senza's bathtub. He tried to trick you by dumping hot dogs in it, but don't be fooled. Those aren't real wieners. All right, off the Frostburn Canyon to kill some bandits. Hey man, um, I just signed up working with Marcus, but he's he's not a very good boss. He shot me. Do you know if anyone else is hiring? Um, I heard that uh, Mr. Tedior is hiring. Oh, I'm not working for Tedior. Screw that. I feel like this run is going to be front loaded with good lore. Because, like, I just did all the good lore in Sanctuary right then. I'm not really sure what else I can even add at this point. Except going, haha, sponsored by Marcus when I shoot someone. Last go. More like last. Ew. Who would you ever use a gun that's not a Marcus gun? Yeah. RP. Is that rusty rebar going through you? Didn't you watch my Last of Us video, Psycho? Come on, man. This timeline thing's gonna be a real headache <laughs> in terms of story progression. Me helping Lilith fight these bandits off is non canon. This is some revisionist history by Marcus. After Jessup died, Marcus said, Ah, yes, it was my man who helped Lilith fight off those dirty bandits. Isn't that right, my employee? And he's like, um, yeah, totally, Marcus. That definitely is what happened. So right now we're inside of a retelling of the story of Jessup by Marcus. So you want to exist in the unreliably narrated story, huh? All right, Lilith, here's some iridium for you. Here you go. Iridium now. Talk later. What? What do you mean you want that one? That one's big. You want the small chunk? Oh my God, what a diva. Fine. There you go, Lilith. Is that more your speed? Yeah, that's the stuff. Give it here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Please. Oh, hang on. Ho ho! Saved by the random string thing. All right. Finally, I did it. What the? Who is this ruffian in my marrow fields? Could it be Larry Lee himself? Well, I'm obligated to kill him. All right, Savage Lee. For the first time ever, I don't want a Deepa. Because if I get a Deepa, it'll be very depressing. I can't use it. Just drop like a white shield. Hey, there we go. Another successful Savage Lee farm. Forgot how good Maliwan is in normal mode. I only play normal mode, so I forgot how bad Maliwan is in other modes, apparently, if you say so. Who gets upset when he says Maliwan? I have news for you, buddy. If you play Borderlands 1, which I probably didn't, you probably didn't even play it, fake fans. You play Borderlands 1, Marcus Vending Machine has Marcus quotes, and he goes, regular bullets just not good enough. Get a Maliwan. He says Maliwan. That's the pronunciation in Borderlands 1. Everyone in Borderlands 1 says Maliwan. And then in freaking Borderlands 3, they change it to Malawan. It's now called Malawan. No, it's not. It was called Maliwan in 1. I'm sticking with the OG pronunciation. Borderlands 2 soundtrack is heavenly. It's true. If I was going to freaking die on Mount Everest trying to climb it, like people that... I don't know why you would even want to try to climb Mount Everest. Anyways, if I was going to do that and I was going to be one of the guys that dies up there, I would want to have like this song on my iPod playing. A little macabre, but true. Can you imagine a better song to freeze to death to? I couldn't. And then, oh yes, and then I can like get on the radio and they'll be like, oh my god, are you okay? I'll be like, wake me up when I'm not on Mount Everest anymore. And they'll be like, is this like a reference? And then it's like, I'm too late, he's dead. I got no work for you. Come back later. All right, I'll come back in the next episode. <laughs>